It's deranged royal fay. They'll act crazy all day. They'll, They'll apologize, apologize for, for the fail, fail but still, still scream and wail. wail. It's deranged royal fay. Yeah. I just realized I wasn't recording. So, um, start off saying Black Lives Matter. Yes, I agree. Happy Pride Month. A lot of shit's happened, and I hope you're all staying safe and sound and not dying from one thing or the other, because it feels like the world's on fire. Okay, so, uh, yes, Boomin has been involved into a little trans flag version of himself. It's crochet. If you love this work, um, the person who made it is one of my good friends from Australia, Borkins. They are amazing and they have a big family. Go support them if you ever get a chance. Like, I always, small artists need a lot of love and support. And Australia was on fire not too long ago, so that too. I know, I constantly do this pattern of disappearing and then coming back and then disappearing. Um, I always say the same thing, oh, I hope I'm going to be making more content again this time, woo, and then I don't. So I've got a little uh, gay gay pride heart in my eyebrow piercing and a trans fist in my ear. Start with, you know, I'm just going to go down the list in chronological order this time, because I didn't go in chronological order last time. Oldest sisters being transphobic. Got upset with offended by my cake and transition journey. So I had surgery recently back in late January, early February. And whilst it might have been some things that my family didn't necessarily approve of, um, my mother actually willingly drove me to and from my surgery and home. And uh, I had surgery and it was a pretty big surgery too. And it, uh, at one point, there was even a point where I was bleeding heavily a lot from it. And, uh, for like four hours straight. And I had to go to the hospital, rush to the hospital, and they forced me to lay on my back for 24 hours straight. And that was not a fun experience. Other than that, everything went off at a hitch. And besides my mother, who had texted me like every day, maybe every other day, no one in my family had messaged, called, te check, drove to check up. This was before, you know, lockdown. So no one came to check on me or at least texted me. Like, I, I understand not driving to see me because it's a half hour drive. I get it. Everyone has their own life. Sister is pregnant with children, with another, has another child too. You know, family's working, etc. But no one even texted me. Not until I said something to my mom about it. Like, oh yeah, so like, not one person's, you know. And it had been like several weeks um, after the fact, when I told my mom, like, yeah, yeah, no one, no one's texted me to check on me or anything or called me. And that kind of, you know, sucks, but like, whatever. Shows where we all stand, right? Um, and then my sister also had, well, the oldest sister, the very first day of my surgery, had this debacle about my cake. And I'll show a picture of my cake wherever, because I only am dyslexic and this is already flip-flopped. But yeah, so uh, she didn't like that. She thought it was offensive, what I did to my own body. Something that caused me a lot of pain, not just f mentally, but physically as well. And uh, she, she showed me pretty much where she stands on my life. And it was kind of this realization that I've lost my sister. And I haven't been able to cry, like actual like cry for over a year now, then that marker was in May when the last time I cried. Um, I've had a few times where I got like a tear or two out and it's really, really, really hard. It's like two or three times, three, four, maybe. I would say four at the absolute most. Um, okay, I, I can recall exactly three, but that was one of those times. It was one of those three was her little flashback about my cake and that just was like a real like wow moment for me like where we are and I have a whole Twitter post about that thread about that so yeah I found out recently that the other sister who you know moved to one of the states that's the worst hardest hit of corona 
has often and on again got her job, has usually struggled to take care of herself, she struggles to take care of animals. Um, not the most sensible or responsible person I know. Just started dating this new guy come February and it's now June. Is pregnant! Pregnant. Pregnant. Pregnante. Pregnante. But now she's pregnant. Ch fuck! She's pregnant! And I'm not really approving of that. I didn't approve of the oldest sister, too, who is also pregnant and... Or she's, she's giving birth now. Uh, she has two kids now. But yeah, so she's pregnant and it feels so hypocritical of her. Because with the oldest sister, when she got pregnant for her first child and she had been in a married relationship for over a year, but not that person even longer, had been in stable jobs, both of them. The sister's currently pregnant, Kat response to my oldest sister bear was no oh no and then don't tell her i said that and really because because she didn't want to sit to her face i feel like we've been very enabling of each other by silence is what causes us from telling the other person i think you're not ready or i think this is a bad idea or this or that and maybe they still won't listen but at least you can kind of say i told you so uh, my sister hasn't been the best on uh, being a mother and stuff, in my opinion. Honestly, I'm surprised my family hasn't called CPS on her. Not that she's beat her kids, but there's just been some stuff that's like, that's not okay. Uh, so yeah. So hypocritical of her for that. And it's just... There's some weird things with the part new partner where he apparently has the same name and nickname as our father and then he also apparently looks exactly like her ex that she like stalked from one state to the other all the way across the country in fact like from like east uh, west to east and south to north like exact opposite ends of the country she followed him all the way there it's a little weird a lot weird but okay um so yes there's that and then um I had a really, really shit experience with my wor last workplace, and this was all fall 2019, and I ended up doing an art piece, and I talked about that in the art piece, about what I went through. And so I'll read, and I'll put the image of what my piece was, and the message I put with it to explain why I chose the flag I did, because the priest was like, you have to pick a pride flag and explain why it's personal for you. So here it goes. This is going to seem a bit long, and it's going to be a lot personal. Over the fall of 2019, I was in an abusive and hostile work environment where I was harassed and frightened so much to the point that I reported a managerial staff, someone who's supposed to be a person I respected and should feel safe around, to HR. Now, the main reason will always be because this person, along with another higher-up manager and some others who were just warped, had a general lack of respect for me because of the way I looked and someone I got along with. I felt like I must have been in back in grade school or something. I felt like I must have been back in grade school or scum something. Scumthing. Something. But things reached their peak when they suspected me of being trans based on me telling them only once that my pronouns were he, him. From constantly feeling like I was being hounded and outed to being yelled at unjustly to having lies spread about me about being a worthless and lazy worker, which many who worked with me could vouch otherwise. On top of the fact that I was always spreading positivity to the point that I actually had customers ask to shake my hand and thank me for always being so nice and welcoming. To being very purposely and maliciously misgendered and invalidated and dehumanized every time I was around this person, I was reaching my ropes and almost quite literally. I was at a breaking point where I... I was at a breaking point with swallowing the and my entire bottle of ADHD medication sounded like a nice option. I confessed to my personal manager what was going on as I was frightened and they took me to HR. My boss, however, did not like that I did not go directly to them, so they had the audacity to lecture me on this. Someone who was scared, hurt, and anxious all because of one of their employees that they put into a position of power. I was almost convinced I was in the wrong and that I was just being a snowflake and overreacting and actually felt guilty for a week or two. But I was told they would be put, give, they was told they'd be given a talking to 
like a parent would a child. I hadn't been the only person to report the supervisor, it turns out. And it hadn't stopped them from gossiping and spreading rumors about me, though they absolutely ignored my existence from that point on unless they absolutely had to interact with me. And as said before, they weren't the only ones who were very blatant about their transphobia. It's been over a year and a half. It's been over a, half a year, and I'm still to this day not able to just let go of what happened. The scars are there, and they just won't fade away. So one day, in my last month there, I dyed my colored half of my hair blue, pink, blue, pink, and platinum blonde white to match the transgender flag, and to turn the tips of my black half to purple, so altogether it was a gender fluid flag. I knew they wouldn't understand the symbolism or meaning behind it, but it was my silent way of saying, you are wrong, I won't stop breathing for you, and I will not cease to exist. And then I also, at the time, I also explained it as my silent way of saying, fuck you, because it was my silent way of saying, fuck you. <laughs> um, so I posted that on pretty much all my platforms, even though my family see, because I, I thought it was important. They saw that, knew that. I did talk to my mom about it. I was talking to my mom about it as it was happening. And then when it finished at a party for my niece, at the last day, my last day at work, I was like, thank God I'm out of my abusive work environment. I could not shut up at that party about my fucking abusive work environment, how I had to report a manager to fucking HR. I talked about it. I did not not talk about it. I talked about it on Twitter. I talked about it in Discord servers. I talked about it to my friends and, you know, support groups and discords and just, I talked about it. I didn't keep it to myself. So my sister sees this on my Instagram, Bunny, you know, the same person who didn't check on me after my surgery, and the same person who's misgendered me unless she needs something from me, um, and she's been one of the most supportive people about my transition, but at the same time, not, you know, still, it feels so facetious the way she goes about it, so, like, doing it to get something from me the way she goes about it, so yeah, so she messages me, like, why didn't you tell us? And, you know, um, you shouldn't keep these things to yourself. You shouldn't keep these things in and bottled up. And, you know, it's like, but I didn't. And I said, I, and I, I usually, my, my thing is usually silence. I usually just ignore her messages or don't talk back or engage. I just, you know, shut down, walk away. And I just, I couldn't today. I just, I just, I had to respond. I was like, no, no. No, 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 no more. No more of this passive aggressive bullshit. No more of this doing things that we, not saying that we don't approve these things to each other's face, but we say it behind a fucking each other's back. No more. Fuck it. So, I responded along the lines of, but I did talk about it. I talked to our mother about it in great length as it was happening. I even talked about the party, our, our niece's party. And I um, talked about it with my support group and my friends, and my partners, and co-workers. In fact, my co-workers were the ones who encouraged me to report to HR. And it's also through some of them after the fact that I found out that I wasn't the only one who reported this person. She responds back. And I, 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 did, I did say something that might have been what provoked, and that was, you don't give me enough credit that I'm a lot stronger than you. I'm a lot stronger than you give me credit for. Uh, something like that. And then she, she goes off. She's just not happy about it. And, um, and she, she, she sends one sentence at a time, but you know, back, 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 like, bam, 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 bam. I'm like, okay, just make me a paragraph and then send it. Like, get your thoughts together, write it out thoughtfully like I did, and then send it to me. You're obviously emotional right now. Um, and then after she does that, she also sends me, like, a thing, like, if I could reach into the darkness and, like, you know, whatever. It's from Instagram. And then she sends me a thing from Instagram. It's like a trans-suicide hotline. I'm like, you don't fucking get to do that. I'm not suicidal. I, I had a moment of feeling my only escape from a hostile, abusive, fucking awful experience was death. But I didn't. And apparently, I found this out afterwards, she thought I did overdose. If I overdosed, I would be the fuck, I would be in the fucking hospital. Maybe not still right now, but I would have gone to the hospital. I would have lost my job. And my family would have known about this because I, I, I can't hide that big of a thing from them. I wouldn't hide that big of a thing from them. 
but I would be put in the mental hospital for trying to kill myself like she did. So no, I didn't overdose. I said it sounded like a good option, did not take myself up on that option. I was scared that I thought that. I scared myself and that's why I knew I had to say something. Because I'm not her. But yeah, so I ended up responding because I know, I know right now she's going through a rough time and she's suicidal depressed. So I said, I know you're suicidally depressed right now and you're going through a hard time, but you're also projecting a lot and putting a lot of things in my mouth I never said. Because she, she was like, you hate me. You want me out of your life and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I never said that in that last message. I don't know where you got that from. I don't know what you translated to that at all, but okay. So I was like, so you're putting words in my mouth. I never said I hate you, and I do not hate you. I think you need to start setting up boundaries, and I think you need, I think you think you are someone who tries to be pleasing everyone around you. You're a people pleaser, and you need to start setting up boundaries and making friends with people who actually, you know, don't treat you like trash and make don't make you feel unwelcome and something along those lines. So she's showing concern to me and obviously I didn't respond to it the best because also to be fair, her first message was very luxury guilty. as like guilting me if we're not talking to her. Very narcissistic. She's using us, not me, but I did talk to us if us is the family because I also talked about my depression and hard time via my holiday letter I left them. So it's not like I was trying to keep it to myself. It's just that I don't talk to these people most of the time anyways because they act like this. So it was very necessary. Like you didn't tell me, therefore you must have been keeping it to yourself. I'm like, no, I just didn't tell you specifically because we never had time to sit down and converse. Um, but yeah, so I, and I mentioned in my thing about how my boss had the audacity to lecture and guilt me while I was scared and hurt. And then she's lecturing and guilting me over being scared and hurt. But yeah, so... After that last message is when she just fucking exploded. And I didn't even need to open the messages. I just saw them and I was like, yeah, okay, I'm finally doing it. I'm blocking her. For the first time in 23 years, I am blocking her. So I went and I blocked her from Instagram, blocked both her Facebook profiles, and I blocked her phone number. So it's going to make group texts the family very interesting and family gatherings. Um... Because I, I don't need to put up with that. I don't need to put up with her abusive language and behavior. Because she, she says, she said to me, how dare you? And I don't let people treat me like trash, especially not my own sibling. And I'm like, if I'm treating you like trash, then why the fuck are you bothering? If I'm so terrible, why are you still here right now? Why do you keep trying if I'm awful? How are you not exhausted? Because I am exhausted. I didn't say this to her, but this is just my thinking. Like, I don't need to fucking respond. I don't need this bullshit. I don't. I don't need this. And I haven't actually read those in full messages any, at all, actually, at this point still yet. I will eventually. But it's just like, I didn't need to. It's the same stuff she regurgitates all the time. And like, okay, so she showed me concern. And then I showed concern back. And it's how dare you is her response. How dare you show concern the same way I did? And yes, technically I called her out as saying she doesn't hang out with the right people because she don't hang out with the right people and it makes her lose her self-value because she's trying to put all these other people in front of her. She's trying to please everyone around her and she really should not. And she also had offered to help me with, like, she, she was like, if she had come to me, I, you know, I went through the same thing with my workplace where they were abusing me. I could have helped you. I'm like, what more could you have done? I went to fucking HR. I got the legal shit done. What more could you have done? Been that solid rock of support? Because you always make me feel worse every time I have a conversation with you. There's no conversation I haven't had with her. That doesn't make me feel worse. My sweetheart Capybara, actually, when I was showing him the messages as they were coming, and he was just like, because I don't think he's ever actually seen that, and he's just... I'm getting crazy vibes. I'm like, yeah. I mean, she does have borderline personality disorder. She does. 
and I have sympathy for her. I have lost sympathy and I care the fact that she is very depressed right now. And I was trying to choose my words very carefully. In fact, I tried my darnest not to villainize her in any way. In fact, I victimized her. I made her the victim of her for once. I made her the heroine for once because she's always complained that we villainize her. So I'm like, poor you. And how dare I do that? You know, for once, the one thing she ever wanted. And she, she's just like, you saying I don't listen, and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, clearly you're not listening because she thought I said I killed, tried killing myself. I did not, did not say that. I said it sounded like a good option. And I'm just, I, I even texted my mom to warn her, like, just so you know, um, a conversation went awry. And so when you get home with Bunny, she might be, you know, plummeted more. And my mom's like, I'm sure she's just concerned. I'm like, that's not what this is about. I'm just, I also told her, like, she might tell you I tried killing myself. That's not true. She misread my message. So, yeah. I, and I talked to my psych about it too. My psych knows. My psych knows all about it. So, yeah. Um, I did warn my mom. She's like, oh, she's probably just concerned because my mom doesn't know what the fuck's going on. And I'm like, that okay, I know she's concerned. I know she cares. She cares too much. And honestly, I don't care that she cares at this point. I know that sounds fucking wrong and awful, but I honestly don't care that she cares. Because she also said this message about, um, uh, Beth said, because I care too, I want you to know that she might have plummeted more. So just so you know, keep an eye on her kind of thing. Or watch out. I don't know. She's acted out violently in the past, either towards people or towards herself. She weaponizes her impulses and it she really needs to stop my mom so at this point when she's ready to 5150 her and maybe she should but yeah so um i was gonna say something about oh yeah she said this mess one of her messages was you may want to cut me on my life and you know you can do that but it's gonna be real difficult for you because i'm gonna still want to be a part of it it'd be one thing if it's be real difficult for me because i want to be a part of it but real difficult for you implies that she's not gonna stop and to me, I'm sorry, but that sounds really fucky and kind of stalkery. I'm like, did you say that to your ex-boyfriend when he broke up with you? Like, oh, you may want to break up, but I still want to be in your life, so I'm still going to be part of your life. I'm going to implement myself into your life. No, that's not okay to do. Someone does not want you in their life. You have to respect that. And I never said that too. I never said I didn't want her in my life. I never said I hated her. And this is before my last message. This is like the second message. Um, or no, no, this, that's the first message I sent back. And she's like, you hate me and you don't want me part of your life. And then it's going to be hard for you though. It's going to be challenging for you because I still want to be part of your life. And maybe I'll post a thread here. Maybe I have been. I don't know. Editing me is going to have to deal with that. Ha ha ha. Fuck you editing me. So yeah. And that's kind of what prompted the cover and poetry reading today and maybe I, I might have a personal poetry reading the one i wrote specifically for her so that's kind of the craziness that's been going on and honestly besides obviously the terrible things going on like the police brutality and the murder and the corona and you know the, the i don't know if people heard about trump passing this law uh executive order about how People in healthcare providers are able to discriminate against people for being trans now. I'm fortunately in a state that's protecting that, that they still make it illegal, that you cannot discriminate. Uh, besides all of that, I'm actually been the happiest that I've been for a long time since I left that hassle, since I stopped talking to her, since I stopped trying to be part of their lives or vice versa or t part of their drama if anything i've been the happiest i've been ever in my life that i can think of because i'm actually taking time to care of myself and provide prioritize myself and maybe that makes me selfish or something maybe maybe they're right. I'm selfish. I'm not giving them a chance, but, and maybe this is me burning bridges, but I'm burnt out and just, they started it really about burning bridges, about acting out. And like, it, it I don't feel like 
I'm contributing more than they have, you know, in regards to fucking up our relationships. Just because we're blood does not mean I have to bend over backwards for them. Just doesn't mean I have to give them my... If if they're going to make me feel worse or hurt, I shouldn't have to endear that because we share blood. Your real family is your real family, not your blood family. Your real family is the people who actually support you, love you, and will be there for you unconditionally. And don't make you feel worse about that. Because I know she feels that way. She feels she loves me. She cares about me. She wants to support me. But she goes about it very toxically and very narcissistically too. I told her she had abandonment issues too. That's what I said. I'm like, I think you have abandonment issues and this is why you're acting this way. Um, your blood family can be your real family. I'm not saying that. I know some people that have some really good relationships with their family and I'm happy for them. And I don't ever want people feeling bad. I have had my sweetheart feel bad a few times of talking about how happy he is of his family. I'm like, don't. I'm happy for you. Like, I'm glad. Like, I can't wait to meet them when I come visit you in England. Like, I'm so excited for that. But but your real family are the people who are really there for you. The people that really make you feel home. This is my home. And I, I've been happier since leaving an abuse. I'm not in a toxic environment. I'm around people who love and support me. People who cherish and believe in me and listen don't treat me vindictively or like a child or like I'm not mature enough and stuff like that. I feel like I can breathe. And I also want to leave off as I did last time that um, make sure to please take care of yourselves. Please watch, you know, Watch out for each other, too. Watch out for your family, your friends, those people you care about, and for your neighbors. And just, I'm very fortunate for a lot of things. I'm fortunate, and this is going to sound really bad, I'm fortunate for my skin color right now during this time. I am fortunate that I don't have to go out right now, that I'm, you know, unemployed to a certain extent. I mean, it sucks to be unemployed because I can't fucking buy anything or, like, you know, donate. I can't donate to charities. That's actually been really, really sucks because I'm like seeing all these charities. Like, I really want to donate to them, but I have no money. I need this money for my medication and stuff like that. I'm sorry. I really want to donate, though. Um, I really want to support these causes, but I can't. At least not financially. I can still support them in other ways. I'm very fortunate that our household hasn't been outed in any way because we do live in a small conservative town. I may live in a blue state, liberal state, but we do live... I said... Right, I never remember the colors. I think blue. But we do have a very conservative small town that we live in. Hence the war environment. Yeah, so please love each other. Care for each other. Stop spreading hate. Just... Take the time to listen to each other and watch out for one another and watch out for yourself too. Look after yourself. It's not selfish to perform self-care. Thank you all for watching. Sorry, I'm always ranting and raving like a fucking lunatic. I hope y'all have a gay day, my little fairy. Well, they're glad that you stayed, but you wasted yet another day. Their videos are a bore, but they've got lots more in store. It's deranged. Royal Faye. Yeah.